Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to CEC Edisit Live Lecture. For all the students of Library Sciences, today we have brought for you a very important and very interesting topic. The topic is Serials Management. Today we will discuss about what serials are, uh, what are different types of serials and how the serials are maintained in the libraries. And for this we have again with us in our studios Dr. Manur Matripati. Uh, she is Deputy Librarian in JNU. So first of all I would like to welcome our guest Dr. Tripathi and I hope that the way she has delivered lectures in our previous sessions today also this lecture is going to be one of the productive sessions. Welcome ma'am, welcome once again to the Edisit lecture and uh, as the name suggests serials, now, what basically serials are? So as you know library is a system and it comprises very many systems system very many subsystems subsystems means where different sections like we have reader services section acquisition section or serial section is another an important section of the library and it deals with all the work which is related to acquisition or procurement of serials so in this connection we are going to talk of serials what are its different varieties, what are the different kinds of serials and how does library procure them, what are the criteria of selecting serials and how are they processed and maintained in library. So today we are going to talk of serial management. So serials as you know, you must have seen serials on TV different soap operas which you see on TV, they are nothing but serials. Serial means something which is in continuation. As you see a serial or a soap opera which continues its episode over a passage of time. So serials means something which continues. Some of the characteristics features of a serial it is issued in separate parts on a regular basis. The different parts are numbered or contain a chronological designation. It is supposed or intended to continue indefinitely. That means a serial is a publication which has a certain number. It is, it is numbered, it is published in a chronological manner and it continues indefinitely. So types of serials, we have journals which you must have seen journals in libraries, journals from various fields like sociology, social sciences, sciences. So a journal is a periodical which has scholarly articles and disseminate current information on research and development in a particular field. Journal, for, for instance, you must have seen journals like in science is cell or science or nature. These are journals which publish scholarly articles. What does it mean? It means that research, that articles which are published in these scholarly, in these journals, they are based upon some study, they are based upon some research. That means some research has been conducted and it is being reported. Its findings are being reported in form of, uh, 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 in form of articles. And these articles are meant for special audience from a special field. That means some journal from, uh, from the field of say library science. It is not meant for general public. It is meant for audience or for researchers or for students or for people who are associated or who pursue library science as a field of study. So that means scholarly journals or journals which report research findings, they are meant for audience from a special field. Then another kind of serial is magazine. Magazine, what is a magazine? A magazine is a periodical for general reading which has articles on various subjects by different authors. The authors who contribute in magazines, they may be journalists or lay persons. They write in a general style on current events or general interest topic for the general public. That means magazines or, you know, uh, magazines are also known as popular periodicals. That means they are not intended for a specialized 
audience they are meant to be uh, read by general public so the uh, the articles or the content it caters to the needs of general public and they are written in a general general style by journalist or even the general public may contribute in popular magazines then other types are a house magazine a house magazine is a publication published by an organization for internal circulation it is available without charge to its readers does not have advertisements it has news or information of interest chiefly to a special group like university so in house publication as the term indicates it is published by uh, by any organization maybe university or school you must be familiar with school magazines or university magazines they are not prized publications that means it is available for free and it is not meant for outside circulation it is meant to be circulated inside that means it is for the the content is for the consumption of employees or for the staff of that particular you know organization uh, for example a university may publish any magazine or newsletter and it is meant for circulation among its own faculty staff it's not for uh, publication outside it's not for circulation outside and school magazines as you know they are also a kind of in house publications they are meant for the students they are not meant to be sold another type which is well known Uh, this is also another kind of serial which is newspaper it is a serial issued at stated frequent intervals usually daily weekly containing news opinions advertisements and other items of current and often local interest some of the examples are everybody knows it newspapers are also a kind of serials they are published regularly there are the newspapers they are published weekly there are some newspapers which publish they are, which are published weekly and daily for example times of india you have is being published daily then there are uh, like speaking tree which is a uh, which is a weekly newspaper which is published new uh, weekly these newspapers have different editions for example times of india it has different editions lucknow edition patna edition and so on it implies that besides the main news items it will have news items to cater to the needs of ge- geographic locality to a particular geographic locality then another type is e journal we talked about journals which contain as i said which have uh, articles scholarly articles based on the research or studies done by researchers an e journal has been defined as any serial which is produced published and distributed nationally or internationally via electronic networks any serial available in an electronic format is known as as an e journal that means any e journal which is published and distributed nationally and internationally via electronic networks that is known as e journal an e journal may be an electronic version of an established print journal there may be a print journal and its equivalent which is available in uh, if its equivalent is there in electronic form then it is an e journal for instance we have cell journal and its electronic version is also available so it is an uh, an example of an electronic journal then there may there may be some journals which are published electronically only that means no dig, no paper print no paper journal is published for example a well known science, library science journal that is area done it is an electronic journal in an, an electronic only journal then these electronic journals can be free or free based uh, of uh, free or fee based that means 
these e-journals may be available against a price. That means if a library wants to subscribe to an e-journal, wants, wants to have an access to a particular e-journal, it will have to pay for it. Or in case it is free, that means library will not be required to pay for it, but it will be available without any cost on the internet. So libraries procure these different kinds of serials, journals, print journals, electronic journals, newspapers, in-house magazines, libraries have. So libraries procure them, process them, collect, organize and preserve the serials for their users by following different proper procedures. This work of acquiring and maintaining serials by following different procedures is known as serials management. Libraries procure these different types of serials. They process them, collect them, display them properly so that they are used by the users, by the readers and the, the different procedures which they follow in, uh, in procuring, organizing, displaying and maintaining preserving it for, uh, for present users and future users, all these procedures which are used to used for their maintenance, they all constitute and they are all known as serial management. So what is the policy of procuring serials? How does a library procure serials? How, the li how does a library select serials? The selection of serials requires evaluative judgment for different individual titles. Some of the criteria which can be used for evaluating serials and selecting them for libraries are discussed over here. But before that, we will talk of policy of procuring serials. That means, what is the policy? How does a library procure serials? Generally, what happens in any library? in any college or university library, serials or journals are selected, they are procured on the basis of recommendations given by teachers and students. And teachers, they generally recommend those journals which are required to meet, which are required for their teaching and research needs. And their teaching and research needs are generally according to the various programs and courses which a university offers. So at the beginning of a session, the li what a library does is that it circulates a list of serials which it subscribes among the faculty members. Then faculty members, they add, they, uh, they make additions and deletions in the list which is being circulated to them according to the research and information needs of their programs, of their students. So that list is discussed, libraries besides the circulation of the list among the teachers. The, the, when the list comes uh, with addition and deletions, these list of serials, they are discussed in the library advisory committee. Library advisory committee, uh, which is uh, popularly known as LAC, it is a body which is being headed by principal or rector. It has various faculty members, deans and chairpersons as members. And they discuss the recommendations given by faculty members. They discuss if, uh, if the budget is available. Uh, they discuss what is the expenditure which will be incurred. And then accordingly, they approve the list of the journals. So this is how the, uh, pro uh, the serials are procured. These serials are generally selected by the faculty members. So generally libraries, they have a written policy uh, of procuring journals. And school libraries, they too have a committee and committee may comprise principal and senior teachers and a person from finance branch uh, to uh, look into the nitty and gritty of selecting. So the crux is that generally libraries, college libraries or school libraries, they generally have a committee which comprises individuals, which comprises senior officers of the organization. They discuss the recommendations given by teachers and the recommendations of journals, they are generally given keeping in mind the needs, the research and 
um, the learning and teaching needs of the way uh, of the teachers and students so this was about the procurement policy then how do they select serials there are different criteria for selecting serials a library may decide to have print subscription only that means generally um, library may have a policy no uh, with regard to the uh, with regard to the mode of serials that means they are a library may prefer to to subscribe uh, the print versions so it may decide accordingly nowadays information seeking behavior of the users are changing information be, uh, seeking behavior of the users is changing the users may decide uh, they may pre, um, they may prefer to have journals in electronic mode so the library may accordingly take decision that means it may prefer to develop a uh, uh, to to develop an online collection so it may decide on subscription to e resources e journals there may be conditions there may be situations where a library may decide no it, that it will have print as well as online journals so it will decide accordingly then there is third way to that is no subscription that means there are certain journals for which their uh, library need not pay which are available in open access so li li library can go for subscription for to those journals then another criteria is contributors writers and institutional affiliation a serial can be judged by its contributors writers and their institutional affiliation if a serial has international authorship it implies that it has wider visibility so when a library is selecting serials or when a committee is selecting serials then it can decide according to the contributor or writers or institutional affiliation if a journal has a uh, international readership that means it is it has wider visibility and it is being used across the globe so that is also one of the criteria when library which libraries use in selecting serials then when library select then coverage of a serial title in abstracting and citation database is also important if a, because a, an abstracting and a citation database they have high standards of including the titles in their database so if a title is Uh, is be is there in is being indexed in an abstracting and citation database that shows that it is it has some some standard um, it meets some standard so it can also be subscribed by the library as it says if a journal is indexed and covered in any citation database citation database as we all know for example web of science or scopus they do not uh, include each and every title which is being published but they have their own parameters for evaluating the content and coverage of the title and accordingly they do that they include it in their database so this is one of the very important factors in while libraries are selecting serials so if a journal is indexed and covered in any citation database it implies that it is widely used by the user community it has some standard the citation database also so shows how many times a serial title has been cited if a serial title has more citations it means that more users more researchers are accessing it and that particular title is being accessed by more users by more researchers of that particular field then cost effectiveness this is another criterion which is being used by the libraries for selecting the titles libraries generally keep the most cost effective titles it means that libraries may subscribe to the expensive titles in case they are in case they are used by the researchers very commonly or very heavily whereas it can drop less expensive side titles if it observes that they are seldom used by the users then interlibrary loan and document delivery statistics interlibrary loan 
as we know it means that if a library cannot if a, if a user needs a particular journal title which is not there in his library then he can make the request to his library and his library will make an effort will endeavor will to find out the title from some other library. So, this is interlibrary loan. So, what happens when a library feels that a, a particular title has been requested for under interlibrary loan and under document delivery and the document delivery statistic shows that it is it has been considerably used and demanded. So, libraries can go for those particular titles. Libraries usually maintain statistics of transactions made through interlibrary loan. So, loan request for journal articles not available in the library may also be considered in selecting a journal for subscription. Then as we all know the, the reputation of a publisher if a journal is being published by a well known publisher. So, it also shows it is also one of the criterion the reputation of the publisher is also important in deciding the stature of a serial title. The information regarding publication is available in the journal itself or may be found on the internet. The publisher may be a commercial one university, pre, university press society or any association. The information relating to publisher may help in selecting a title for the library. So, the crux is that publisher all publishers all international publishers or commercial publishers like uh, different commercial publishers are like Springer or Elsevier and University Press as you know Oxford University Press or Cambridge University Press. They all they do not publish uh, uh, manuscripts just like that all the manuscripts submitted to them they all they are put to rigorous peer review that means whatever manuscript manuscript is sent to them they are manuscripts are being sent to reviewers where reviewers review the content they uh, review the content the language the methodology the uh, findings before they are published and disseminated to the users so they have their own standards these standards are built over a passage of time and so uh, while libraries they are selecting serials they can accordingly select uh, serials according to the publisher. For example, any, any, uh, any title of Elsevier or say Springer or say Sage they will have their own importance. So, these are the uh, publishers or the, uh, these publishers help in selecting the titles where librarians or library or any committee can easily decide upon the content or standard of the uh, particular journal title according to the publisher and information of the publisher is available in the uh, journal title or it can be easily had from internet. Then physical makeup and illustrative material. In case it is a school library, public and school libraries have to take into consideration physical makeup and illustrative material of the series. This may not apply in college or university libraries, but in school libraries or in public libraries. Uh, for example, if journals have to be procured for children, then efforts have to be made, efforts should be made to see if illustrative material is there, if in order to in order to engage the attention of the students, it is very important to see physical makeup and illustrative makeup of the uh, journal because in school libraries these uh, reading habits have to be cultivated among students. Students have to be drawn have to be attracted towards the uh, uh, reading material. So, it is very important to take into consideration physical makeup and illustrative makeup of the of the titles of the serials. And in public libraries or in school libraries too that means a, a serial should have colorful or glossy pages. The magazines for general, uh, children should uh, such magazines will definitely attract children. Then place of publication. This criterion is important for public libraries. For instance, the public libraries may like to include serials or magazines, newspapers which are published from 
from local area, from the area in which the libraries are located. Because naturally, if a library is in, say, in a particular area, in public libraries in a particular area, so people from the neighboring areas would like to have access to content with regard to that area. They may be interested in the history of that particular place. They, be, they may be interested in the tourism related to that place. So the place of publication is important. Similarly, an academic library may include serials published at the parent institution. A library may be a university library may be, uh, may be publishing some, uh, uh, some journals or some titles. So it's very important for that library to have the, uh, to have the publications of that particular uh, organization with which it is associated. Then libraries may procure newspapers from different regions of the country and, and uh, even public libraries or school or, un, uh, or university libraries may have a policy to, uh, to procure newspapers from different parts of the country in order to have a proper geographical balance to ensure geographical balance in the newspaper coverage or a library may focus on the newspaper published in its own state. Then grade level and age level, this criterion is especially important for school libraries. It is important to know which grade level and age level the journal caters to. We have seen the, that libraries have procurement policy, they have a written procurement policies. Then there are different parameters or different criteria which should be used for selecting serials. Then now we will see what are the methods of procuring serials. First is subscription. That means subscri subscription is a fee which a university pays or which a library pays to, to the vendor in order to get uh, access or in order to get the print copies of a journal. That is known as subscription. Then you have membership. Membership means there are different associations, learned bodies, libraries may become a member, may become members of those learned bodies or uh, associations and in lieu of the membership which they get, which they have, they get uh, pub their publications. That means if a library becomes a member of some uh, or association, so association will offer their uh, newsletters or the journals which they publish. In case the library is not a member of any particular association, then it will have to pay uh, for, in order to get access, in order to get uh, journals or in order to get online access to the publications of that association. As you all know, IFLA is uh, an organization and it publishes a journal, IFLA journal. In case a library has membership of IFLA, uh, then its library will get that journal for free because library has already paid for the membership. In case it does not have, a mem it has not become a member of IFLA, then it will have to pay for getting access to or for getting print copies of IFLA journal. Then you have gifts, then libraries also get gifts. Uh, 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 they get journals and gifts. There are associations which publish their journals and they send to the, uh, their journals to, to other libraries as gifts. Then there are deposits. Libraries may receive serials under legal deposit. That means delivery of books act 1954 enacted by parliament. It regulates the deposit of books published in India to National Library of India, Kolkata. And this was amended to include newspapers and serials. Then we have exchange. Libraries generally get journals in exchange to, for example, if a library, if a university publishes a particular journal, 
then it may exchange that particular journal with institutions with other institutions with uh, and they will send their publications in exchange uh, one library will send its own publication for instance if uh, uh, jnu library publish uh, or if say indian journal of open learning which is being published by indira gandhi national open university it sends that um, Uh, uh, to, uh, its journal to other universities and in exchange it gets journals which are published by other universities so this is an example of exchange then vendors or serial subscription agents placement of new subscriptions these uh, journals are are being subscribed through various vendors or serial subscription agents vendors are the agents or they are the companies which provide journals to the libraries placement of new subscriptions their uh, subscriptions orders are placed to them then renewal of subscriptions cancellation of subscriptions consolidation of serial orders they submit customized invoices then claims can be submitted to the vendors or replace missing issues and they vendors they also provide sample issues then there are different methods of procuring serials one is first is payment libraries receive annual invoices with price proof and bank exchange rates in december the invoices are processed for release of payment which may be made through check draft or electronically the vendors may submit supplemental invoices due to increase in subscription fee and fluctuation in foreign currency rate which are also processed for release of payment so what happens generally the subscription period it's from january is is calendar year which is january to december so generally libraries they uh, they place orders with vendors in the month of december and vendors they provide uh invoices they provide invoices uh, and which is an uh, which is uh, a state it which is a statement that or it is a kind of bill which has to be paid by the library and with invoices they also give supplement they give uh, documentary proof of the Uh, subscription price of a particular journal that because a library cannot pay payment until or unless there is some proof that the particular with regard to uh, cost of the journal so a uh, uh, vendor what does he do he pro, uh, he submits uh, in an invoice and that invoice is accompanied by documentary proof of the price of the journal then that uh, invoice is processed the payment can be done Uh, by draft or by check but nowadays libraries have uh, have switched over to uh, electronic pay payment that means library transfer money uh, they don't do it through check or draft or uh, they do it they transfer the money electronically and um, when once the payment has been done after some time the the you know, the vendors may submit supplementary invoices too that may be due to uh, rise in in uh, in the price of the subscription uh, of the journal or there may be fluctuation in foreign exchange rate so accordingly the vendor submits uh, supplementary invoices and library has to uh, process those supplementary invoices too for release of payment then what are the different steps or procedures which are followed once the journals are received once the journals or serials serials uh, different kinds of like uh, serials which are received in libraries for example once journals or magazines or newspapers are received then what does a library do it in, uh, it does check in and what is this check in check in is it involves maintaining records of receipt of issues of different serials subscribed by the library the details are maintained in a cardex file which is arranged alphabetically each entry has the following information 
title, place of publication, frequency, vendor, date of order, payment record, receipt date of different issues. It is very important for you to know that all these details are maintained in the library with regard to all the serials which are procured title, place of publication, frequency, vendor, date of order, when the payment was done, all these details are recorded. So, what is the importance of maintaining all these records? Inventory control for currently received serials. If the library does not maintain records of all these things, then what will, be hap what will happen? There will be a chaotic uh, situation. If, in these, in, if these records are properly maintained, so even a reference can be given very easily. If a user comes to the library, staff can easily see when that uh, particular title was received or is staff can easily find out with regard to the availability of that particular title and provide service accordingly. If proper records are maintained, then it is very easy to find out if something is missing or if something was not received. Then records, how does the library maintain record? Records are maintained manually and records are maintained uh, electronically too. Libraries may maintain records of the journals which they receive in a ledger or in a register system and at the same, um, but uh, these ledger and register system, they are followed in small libraries, in school libraries. But in generally in college or university libraries, they have a cardic system which is a steel cabinet box and where, uh, uh, where details of the journals they are maintained in, in cards. These are the manual system. Then there are libraries which follow now, nowadays libraries have automated, they use int uh, ILMS that is integrated library management software and all housekeeping operations are done through uh, library or, or software. So, in this two details of all the journals since libraries are using integrated library management software. So, this tool like you have VTLS Virtua or Lipsys that means libraries maintain all the details of the records of all the details of the various journals or various serials which they subscribe through, uh, through these software. Keeping track of missing issues and claiming. Libraries may claim with vendors for not getting issues which have already been paid for. In simple words, a claim is a reminder to the vendor telling him that a particular issue has not been received. Claims may be due to various reasons. This is very important. Records help in maintaining, you know, library can easily find out, staff can easily find out what were the issues uh, which did not arrive and then accordingly uh, it has to make, it has to claim for them uh, to with the vendors. A skipped issue is if a particular issue has not been received or if issue number 3 arrives before issue 2 is received, then it, it clearly shows that issue 2 has skipped. Inactive new order is when a library places order for new subscription with the vendor, but the order does not start or issues do not arrive, then it is an inactive new order and which uh, and in this such a case vendor has to be reminded with regard to it. Replacement, an issue actually received may require to be replaced as damaged copy was received. What happens when a particular when uh, issues are when a journal is uh, is being received in physical copy or in print copy then in transit it may get damaged that in such cases it has to be replaced that means library staff has to observe and it has to place request with the vendor to replace uh, to replace the particular damaged copy. Then budgeting for serials, it is very important as we know a budget process is a mechanism for planning, setting priorities and developing a proper collection. A budget document is prepared for the forthcoming year. It helps in requesting funds from the authorities. The budget should reflect the funds which will be required during the next financial year. 
A serial budgeting involves estimating the expenditure which will be incurred on various categories. Budget as uh, it's always important and uh, rather it's one of the very important activities in a series or in any section because ultimately budget is a mechanism, it is a way uh, until or unless fund, a library gets funds, it cannot procure journals and it cannot provide service to the users. So, a budget has to be a budget is always prepared for the forthcoming year and so when a budget is prepared it has to take into account all the needs which may come up during the next year. It has to take into account the current subscription, the current periodical subscriptions which a library has because it has to maintain that in the next year. It has to take into account membership charges of various organizations because a library gets subscriptions gets journals through membership of various organizations. Then at times request may come up for, uh, uh, for subscribing to or for procuring back files of some journals of some journals which the library did not have in the past. So, a budget should include provision for procuring backgrounds of periodicals. Then newspapers and popular magazines, new demands, new recommendation may come up online journals, online databases that has to be taken care of in the budget. Then binding charges, when the library procures journals in print then at when the set completes it has to be bound. So, binding charges have to be taken care of while the library is pro uh, preparing budget. Budget allocation should be requested for new titles which may be recommended by researchers and faculty members. The faculty members and researchers and students may recommend some new titles. So, while budget is being planned or estimated, uh, then uh, there should be provision for expenditure on new titles or on new recommendations which may come up. Treatment of unbound or loose issues. The print serials are generally received as single and unbound issues. Thus, when unbound issues form a set after a year, a decision has to be made about their permanent preservation. Libraries have two options, discarding and binding. Generally, what happens when the print, uh, generally print issues, they come up, the print titles, they come up as individual loose issues. A particular title may have, uh, may publish four issues in a year or three issues in a year or two issues in a year. It may vary from title to title, but at the end of the year on all the issues are received then in scholarly journals or when the all the issues have been received then library may decide whether it has to maintain them for long term or whether it will be discarded. In all scholarly journals like science journals, social sciences journals, library generally, uh, uh, libraries generally keep them by binding all loose issues. But for popular magazines like India Today or Reader Digest, they are generally, they are not bound, they are generally discarded. But then library has to, has to decide, libraries usually decide that such popular magazines or newspa newspapers they are going to keep for 3 months or 4 months or 6 months and after that they will be discarded. So, this is an important decision which has to be taken with regard to, with regard to discarding or binding of the titles. Libraries may decide to discard unbound issues if they do not want to permanently maintain them in their collections. For instance, newspapers and popular magazines like India Today, Reader Digest are discarded. Gift periodicals are often discarded because the libraries do not want to commit funds for binding. When the discard option is adopted, a decision is made to keep the issues for a set time period such as 3 months, 6 months or, or a year and so on so forth. But when in scholarly journals, when libraries have to keep them for future use, then they have to identify commercial binders. That means in-house 
when the library is subscribing to journal titles in big numbers say uh, 300, 400 and a particular title generally has uh, 4 issues or 3 issues which may differ from case to case so generally. So, in such cases libraries have to get the, get the issues bound um, by outsourcing the work. So, they have to identify commercial binders. In such cases what happens? First libraries identify which titles need to be sent for binding. Preparation of binding shipments, then maintaining all records of what is being sent, the date on which loose issues are sent, expected date of receiving bound sets, this information is vital for serving the users of the library. Once the library has identified what, which titles are to be bound, then it makes sets and it decides when these sets will be sent and which will and when will they be received because they are very important such details are very important for giving uh, reference services to the users. Bindery backup, commercial binders pick up and deliver binding shipments on a fixed schedule, receiving bound sets from the bindery. Sets which are received should be tallied with the list which was prepared when loose issues were being sent. The spines of the bound sets should be checked to ensure accuracy. The bound sets are accessioned and stamped with library seal. Once the sets are sent, all the details are noted how many sets were sent. But when the sets, when the sets, bound sets are being received, then the then the staff has to check that all the is, uh, issues which were sent uh, have come back. The 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 lot which comes back is tallied with the details which uh, uh, which were prepared while the lot was being sent. So in order to find out whether the work has been done satisfactorily, it it ha all the details have to be checked. And whatever details are given on the spine of the journal, they are all correct or otherwise these details have to be checked by the library staff. And after che checking the library um, staff, they, um, all the bound journals, they are accessioned and stamped with library seal. Once the serials, once the journals have been bound, then they are arranged in stacks for students and others to use. They may be arranged in alphabetical sequence that means all the journals which are being uh, received by the library once they are bound, they can be arranged, libraries sometimes decide to arrange them in alphabetical sequence while some libraries may decide to uh, arrange them in subject manner that means all subject, uh, all journal titles on science will be put together, on journal titles on sociology will be put together and so on and so forth. Now circulation, serials generally what happens once the journals have been received back, they have been uh, bound, they have been checked, then they are arranged in stacks. But what happens like books they are circulated that means they are issued out to the students, journals they are generally not issued to the student, uh, to the students or researchers or faculty members. In case somebody requires it on very urgent basis, then what happens? They can either take it, uh, you, they can just get it photostated, an article or two can be, they can have it on uh, photocopies of, uh, of an article or two. But and at times libraries may decide to loan, to provide, to issue them on short term basis. But generally, uh, by and large, journals are not issued to the users as books are being issued or circulated. Other miscellaneous jobs which are done in serial section are multiple copy decision. Generally, what happens uh, if a particular title is in uh, is very popularly used in um, by the researchers or by the user community of a particular type of a particular library, then library may decide to uh, to procure that particular title in 
in multiple numbers that means it may decide that instead of single copy subscription it will have it will procure four copies or five copies accordingly so this decision has to be taken multiple copy decisions that that is whether a single copy will be procured for a particular title or multiple copies will be procured then location decisions once the decision has been made once the bound journals have been bound then if the library feels crunch for space then it may decide to store them at uh, at remote locations so it will be uh, a decision has to be taken with regard to it whether a library uh, whether a particular title will be kept well, whether the back files of those part, uh, of a particular title will be kept at the main uh, campus or it will be stored at different other remote locations then access and ownership decision which is an important decision which is taken in serial section generally or the traditional or the conventional belief of, of the libraries is that library should provide service to the users on the basis of holdings which are being housed in a particular library but now things are changing now the new concept has come up that ownership is not important access is more important that means libraries need not uh, need not necessarily have physical possession of the of the holdings of the journals but the thing which is important is that information should be made available information should be made accessible to the users so a decide a library may decide whether to subscribe a particular journal title or it will depend upon interlibrary loan on document delivery uh, services in order to cater to the needs of its users so here it's very important to take a, a decision with regard to access or ownership but then as it happens libraries cannot have uh, in all the journals um in, uh, the libraries cannot procure all the journals which are being published so here access comes uh, 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 libraries may accordingly decide whether to put own particular title or to depend on other libraries for a particular title then cancellation of serials a particular title is being uh, has been subscribed to in a library for say for a number of years then libraries may take decision whether to can, uh, can continue with the subscription or cancel the subscription it's again very important because it depends upon the usage and recommendation given by the uh, by the faculty members or by the students and similarly if a title if a particular title say a library has been subscribing to a particular title um, in multiple numbers uh, that means if a library has been subscribing to a particular title say four copies of a particular title then a library may decide to cancel the uh, particular title maybe because that particular title is no longer um, needed by the researchers or the research needs or the teaching needs uh, have changed or maybe a particular title is available in multiple databases so accordingly may decide library may decide to drop or cancel the serial so that's again an important decision which may, which has to be taken because most of the uh, titles of social sciences say are available in procest or ebsco then if a library is subscribing to a particular title in print then it may decide that since it is available in online databases for so it may decide to cancel to drop the print title then foreign languages titles maybe a library subscribes to many foreign languages titles then due to uh, financial crunch or due to budgetary uh, constraints library may feel that since the language titles journals in foreign languages they are not used so commonly so popularly so may decide to cancel then duplicate subscription if a library has branch libraries too on the same campus and library made and they are also subscribing to same title so a central library may take the decision to drop the subscription of those duplicate titles and may decide that uh, information needs may be met by borrowing from uh, branch libraries cost and cost effectiveness 
all expensive titles libraries may decide to drop in case they are not being used or it may decide to keep them or it may uh, decide to drop all less expensive titles if it feels they are hardly used. So, a decision has to be taken um, with regard to this. Then another thing which is very important is user input. Libraries may be providing lot of services, but then all the services come to naught if user feedback is not taken into consideration. Then libraries where on regular basis they, can, they, they take into account, they survey the user's need and they take, uh, they take into consideration feedback given by the users. If the users uh, feel that a particular title is not, is not of much use or if they suggest some other title, so user input or user feedback back is also very important in taking decisions. Then another important activity, important activity of serial section is weeding. As the term indicates, weeding is done in for uh, say is uh, you is done in gardens to weed out to to eliminate unwanted growth. So, similarly to in libraries to weeding is followed, is we, it, it is being done in order to eliminate the collection which is not required or which is less used. And there are different criteria which are used, there are different parameters which are used for weeding and it is an important activity which should be done on a regular basis. Physical condition of the book. If the, if the book has become worn out, if it, it is in tatters, it needs to be replaced, then the book can be weeded out. Incomplete backgrounds, um, if a journal, if a stray journals, at times libraries receive journals in gifts, sometimes publishers they give uh, journals in free uh, in order to promote their uh, journals. So, if a library has incomplete backgrounds of journals then it may decide to weed them out. Use if a particular title is being used less then it may decide accordingly to use to weed it out. Collection policies of the libraries for example, if, a, if the research needs or teaching needs of a, of a particular university or of a particular organization changes, then it may decide to put the backgrounds at a particular storage, can, may decide to store them at some remote locations in order to provide place to the new collection. So, it may take decision. Uh, and accordingly the collection can be weeded or it can be removed to remote locations. Then availability in alternate format, availability in alternate format that uh, as I said journals are available, titles are available in different formats. So, if a library feels that library has been subscribing to a particular title since long, but now that is available in print in electronic form, it is in open access or it is available in one of the databases, online databases uh, which, uh, which are being subscribed by the libraries. So, library may decide to, uh, to, elim to weed out the backgrounds. So, if the backgrounds are available in any of the online databases, then library may decide to weed out the database. To, uh, weed out With the this note, uh, we would like to end this lecture here as a uh, last point suggests that availability in neighboring uh, libraries uh, is the another point of uh, the miscellaneous jobs for the serial um, sections. With this note, uh, we would like to take your leave. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so very much. And we believe that in future sessions and future lectures, we would be able to talk more on the library sciences. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So much.